Chapter 17, Section 3. Ketone Bodies. Ketone Bodies, also known as acetone, acetoacetate, and D-beta-hydroxybutyrate. Okay. These can be utilized as carbon sources to feed into the citric acid cycle. Uh, side note, I'm sure you guys have heard of it. The keto diet is based on this. You're taking fatty acids and you're cutting them up into these ketone bodies. And the ketone bodies in your bloodstream will be taken up by your cells and then utilized as the carbon source fed into the citric acid cycle at different places. Um, so, acetone is exhaled. Acetone gets into the bloodstream, but it crosses um, into the alveoli, it diffuses the alveoli, and then it's volatile and you breathe it out. The acetoacetate and the beta-hydroxybutyrate, these stay in the blood and they're going to be transported out of the liver and then converted in the cells into acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA, which will then go into the citric acid cycle. How does this work? Well, the acetoacetyl. Remember, that was the four carbons. That literally is just two acetyl-CoAs that have been joined together by thiolase to form a ketone body. It's a reversal of the last step of beta oxidation. So yes, you can string together acetyl-CoAs. Liver can do this, and then this gets kicked out. Acetoacetyl-CoA, you bring in another acetyl-CoA, get rid of its coenzyme A portion, and you add it on. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Beta hydroxy beta methyl CoA, also known as HMG CoA. Go through using HMG CoA lyase. Remove the acetyl group right here, the acetyl CoA. And now you're left with the blue and the brown box, which is a four carbon thing, better known as acetoacetate. Acetoacetate will be transported to the bloodstream and then carried throughout the, throughout the body. Acetoacetate, depending upon what cell, what metabolic activities are occurring at that point in time, Acetoacetate decarboxylase takes acetoacetate and, well, like it says, decarboxylates, turns it into a, a three carbon acetone. Or reduces it and now you get beta hydroxybutyrate. Carbonyl becomes the hydroxyl. That's the big difference right there. This is reversible. This is not because we do not have the ability to add the fix the carbon from acetone to back to acetoacetate. Remember, the only way we can fix carbons is if we do it with uh, carbonate, HCO3. Beta-hydroxybutyrate. Acetoacetate, reversible, reversible. The acetoacetate with a little succinyl CoA becomes acetyl acetoacetyl CoA. Thiolase goes through, splits it in half, and you now have two acetyl CoAs all over again. 
wait a minute. We just did that in reverse. Why are we redoing it? Why are we undoing what we just did? Because the acetyl-CoA's aren't going to go through the bloodstream very well. But the uh, acetoacetate, yeah. The D-beta-hydroxybutyrate, yeah, stable. Spread throughout the bloodstream to other cells, other tissues throughout the body. Made in the liver, pumped out into the blood, transported everywhere, taken up by the target cells. And then the beta-hydroxybutyrate becomes acetoacetate, which becomes acetyl-CoA, which becomes two acetyl groups, which feed directly into the citric acid cycle. So per two acetyl-CoAs in the liver cell, an hepatic cell, get joined together. Acetoacetyl-CoA becomes acetate, put into the bloodstream, carried elsewhere, ends at, you know, say um, a neuron in my brain takes up beta-hydroxybutyrate or acetoacetate, either one, okay? Say it takes up the beta-hydroxybutyrate. Well, beta-hydroxybutyrate will then be oxidized, becomes acetoacetate. Acetoacetate will then be, you know, um, joined to succinyl-CoA, releasing succinate. And now we have acetoacetyl-CoA. We bring in another coenzyme A from the mitochondrial and split it. We're using a thiolase in the process. And now you have two acetyl-CoAs that were originally made in the liver are now liberated and ready to be used in the mitochondria of one of my neurons. Pretty cool. Turns out the liver does not have the ability to utilize ketones. Just has the ability to make them. Has the ability to make them and then pump them out into the blood to be used elsewhere. The liver is going to be using, to a minor extent, the glycogen that's stored there. To a major extent, the fatty acids. Sweet. So the liver is the producer, not a consumer when it comes to ketone bodies. Again, it goes back to at the beginning of this lecture, I made the comment that this whole ketone thing is the basis of keto. Keto, instead of using glycolysis, you know, from the standpoint of sugars, the carbs, you are putting yourself in a quasi-starvation diet, you know, by suppressing the carbs you're taking in and you're going for fatty acids. So you're doing the whole first two sections of this chapter. That's going to be your most of your cellular metabolism. But the hallmark for the people who are doing the keto thing and doing the, you know, the starvation, you know, I only eat so many hours during the day, starve myself for the rest of them. Um, is that they're trying to induce this whole ketone thing so that your liver starts breaking down fatty acids into acetyl-CoA, joining those together to form the acetyl um, acetone or the beta-hydroxybutyrate, which then puts into the bloodstream. And then that's the source because you've already depleted your glycogens in your muscles and your liver, and now you're going after fatty acids. And that's what you're trying to do. Turns out, though, um, side note is that this is also what happens, excuse me, for people who are diabetic. Um, people who are diabetic um, have trouble with the blood sugars, they overproduce, underproduce, have too much blood sugar, too low blood sugar. So that whole balancing act of when to go to the glycogen, when not to go to glycogen is totally screwed up and their cells seem to go more toward the fatty acids. And then they'll get a lot of ketone bodies formed. A lot of ketone bodies are gonna be formed and then excreted out into the bloodstream, which is why people who are diabetic and their blood sugars are way off, 
their breath starts to take on a fruity smell, an alcoholic -y fruity smell, that's the acetone. I'm not going to go into all the different pathways that are due to. They call this acidosis. Um, uh, when the blood sugar, I'm sorry, not the blood sugar, the blood pH gets too low. Uh, this is caused by increased levels of acetoacetate and beta hydroxybutyrate. So those whole ketone bodies that those keto people really want to have can put you into uh, um, acidosis, low blood sugar, or low, I keep on saying low blood sugar, low pH levels, which can then interfere with different processes, different transporting of certain things. Ketosis, you have high levels of the ketone bodies in the blood and urine. So you're actually passing out these ketone bodies. They're so high, your, your kidney is filtering them out and it's going to sh actually show up in your urine. Yeah. Urine. urine. It gets high enough, these ketone bodies get high enough, you're going to start getting lowered blood pH. This is what is known as ketoacidosis. This is not a good thing to be in, especially for diabetics. If diabetics get into ketoacidosis, that's the whole acetone, fruity slash alcohol -y, you know, breath, their pH in their blood goes crashing down, ketone bodies are way too high, can start putting them into some really bad places. This is what you'll see happen a lot with people who are untreated diabetic. Um, acetoacetate decarboxylase is going to take the acetoacetate, which is in the blood, start turning it into acetone, hence the breath. Large quantities of acetoacetate, which is now going to become acetone. And then their blood pH is going to drop. You start getting the acetone out in the breath, ketone bodies in their urine, and it's going to start impacting metabolic functions transport, uptake, and all sorts of things.